Deliver, set free the spirit of the sweet, sweet Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. If you will pray with me on today. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on your people. Dear God, in the name of Jesus, we come before thy presence, Lord God, first of all, to give you all glory, honor, and praise. Father God, you are worthy today. Heavenly Father, we say thank you on today. We thank you, Lord God, for not only what you've done, but simply, God, because of who you are. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise on today. With our whole hearts, with our minds, with our spirits, with our mouths, with the uplifting of our hands, God, we praise you. We lift you up today. Now, God, we ask in the name of Jesus, God, that you will forgive us, dear God, for any and all things, Lord God, that have not been pleasing in your sight. We ask now, God, that you will remove all hindrances. Satan, you have no place in this house of worship today. Your people, God, have come for a word on today. And the devil will not hinder your word from going forth. We ask now, God, that your Holy Spirit will move in this place just like a mighty rushing wind on the day of Pentecost, dear God. When you sent your Holy Spirit and you filled your people with your power. We ask that you will move now, God. Move from heart to heart and from breast to breast in a mighty way, God, like only you can. Strengthen now your servant. Strengthen me, God, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. Fill me with your Holy Ghost, God to do your work and to do your will just one more time. Help me to speak, Lord, those words and the message, Lord God, that you have given me to give unto your people. The devil is a liar today. Satan, you are a liar today. You have no dominion, no authority, no power in this house of worship. Now, God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer, it is in the name of Jesus, that mighty, 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 mighty name of Jesus, that all-powerful and all-glorious name of Jesus, we pray this in all prayers. Let the people of God say amen, 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 amen. and amen. amen. Hallelujah. We give God all glory, honor, and praise on today. Let's give God a hand clap of praise for what he has done in this house of worship already on today. Somebody came here today to hear a word from the Lord. Somebody came today to receive their breakthrough. Somebody came on today to receive their healing. And so on today, we're gonna give God all glory, honor, and praise for what he's already done and for what he is about to do. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Give our glory and praise to the angel of this house in his absence. Our awesome, awesome, powerful pastor, the Reverend Leroy Cherry. Give God all glory and honor. Yeah. And we thank him on today. Yeah. I ask that you will pray with me and for me as I bring forth the word on today. The devil is trying to have his way in my body. But I say what Paul said. I glory in my infirmities because I know that in my weakness, 
God's power and strength is made perfect. If you will turn with me to the book of Numbers. To the book of Numbers, the 14th chapter. Beginning at verse 6. Numbers, the 14th chapter, beginning at verse 6. And Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Zephaniah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we passed, through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us a land which floweth with milk and honey. Uh -huh. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land. For they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. If you will, just for a moment, I would like to speak from the subject, don't give up, the promise is near. Amen. Don't give up, the promise is near. A promise is a declaration that one will do or refrain from doing something that is specified. It is a binding declaration that gives the person to whom the promise is made a right to expect or to claim the performance or forbearance of an identified and specific act. It is an oath, a pledge, a vow, a covenant that is made by one person to another. A promise may be written or verbal, absolute or conditional, lawful or unlawful, or expressed or implied. But regardless of the contents of the promise or the manner in which it is given, in all scenarios, the recipient of the promised word or deed stands in expectation that he or she will receive exactly what is guaranteed by the promise giver. Not only does he or she stand in expectation of receiving what is promised, but it is expected that the promiser has the power, the authority, and the will to fulfill and perform it. The promisee believes, trusts, and has faith that the promiser will honor his or her commitment and obligation, uphold the terms set forth in the agreement, and deliver at the appointed time. But my sisters and my brothers, if we are willing to be honest with ourselves and each other on today, we will admit that when we make promises, we don't always hold up to our end of the bargain. Sometimes we unintentionally break our promises. Sometimes circumstances arise in our lives that prevent us from fulfilling our duties and our commitments to our sisters and our brothers. But then there are times when we make promises to folk with the sole intent of defaulting, backtracking, and dishonoring the terms of our oath. And in many cases, as sinners saved by the grace of God, we fail to fulfill our promises to our God. We make promises that we're going to study the word a little more. We're going to attend church every Sunday. We're going to go to Bible study a little more. We're going to go to Sunday school a little more. Give a little bit more of our time and our tithes unto the Lord and be just a little more faithful. As a matter of fact, I bet you it's some folk in here on to this morning that made the vow to the Lord on the first day of 2020. 
but I guarantee you that at this moment and at this time, you have forgotten about every promise that you have uttered unto the Lord. And you're back to business as usual. You're not studying the word like you're supposed to. You're not praying like you're supposed to. You're not coming to Sunday school like you're supposed to. You're not giving your tithes and your offerings like you're supposed to. But thanks be to God Almighty that when he makes a promise, when he makes a covenant with his people, when he tells you that he can and he will do something for you, you better believe with assuredness that it will come to pass. You don't have to wonder about it. You don't have to worry about it. You don't have to stress about it. If God said it, then it, that settles it. And no matter what the circumstances may be at a particular point in time, no matter how far away from your promise that you may seem, and no matter how difficult the path may be to your promise, or how difficult it may get on your path to your promise, you can rest assured that if God said it, if God said it, if God promised it, then it is so. And it shall come to pass. All you have to do is trust, believe, and stand on God's every word. I stopped by to tell somebody on this day, on this first Sunday, in the month of March 2020, don't give up. Your promise is near. In today's text, the 14th chapter of Numbers, we find that the nation Israel, God's chosen people, are refusing to enter into the land of Canaan, the land that God has promised to them. After being delivered from Pharaoh and Egypt, the Israelites journeyed towards the promised land. And the word of God tells us in chapter 13 that as they reached Kadesh Barnea, which is located at the border of Canaan, Instead of proceeding into and taking the land that was promised to their forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, instead of taking hold of the land that God had already said belonged to them, instead of trusting God and believing in his promise, they relied on their own understanding and allowed their fear and their unbelief to undermine the favor that God had already given to them. You see, sometimes when God gives us a promise and shows us favor, we allow our human conditions and our human thinking to cause us to lose sight of what God has already given us. And before we know it, we find ourselves questioning and worrying and murmuring and refusing to enter our land of promise. Our fears, our unbelief, our uncertainties, our complexities, and our perplexities will cause us to miss out on our biggest and our greatest blessings. But you see, no matter what anybody says, no matter what may come your way, we must learn to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts and lean not unto our own understanding. We must remember to commit our ways unto the Lord and trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. We must remember that the Lord is not slacking concerning his promises. We must remember that God is not a man that he should lie. We must remember that God's promises are a declaration and assurance that he can and he will bring to pass whatever it is he has said. If he promised it, then it is so. It doesn't matter what the devil says. It doesn't matter what your friends, your family, or your enemies says. If God promised it, if God promised it, if he promised it in 1950, if he promised it in 2000, if he promised it in 2010, if he said it in 2020, you can rest assured with all your heart and soul that it is so. Your promise is near. If he said it, he shall perform it. If God said to you today that he's going to heal your 
your body. You best believe that he's going to heal your body. You may have pains. You may have aches. The doctor may give you bad news. But if God said it, if he promised your healing, he shall bring it to pass. So chapter 13 goes on to tell us that instead of possessing their promised land as God intended, the Israelites decided to send 12 spies into Canaan to search the land and size up the people. You see, instead of trusting the will of God, they decided to test the will of God. And if we are honest with ourselves on today, when God gives us a promise, when he, when he gives us his will, when he shows us his purpose, sometimes we feel like we have to test God. God tells you he's going to do something for you, that he's going to bless you with something, that he's going to deliver you, set you free, make ways for you, perform miracles in your life. And instead of trusting God, you try to test God. Instead of trusting that God had everything under control, the Israelites had to see what they were up against. So they sent the 12 spies into the land. And 10 came back with a negative report. And 2 came back with a good report. How many of you know here today that the good report was the Lord's report? Do I have anybody in here today that knows just a little bit about the Lord's report? Do I have any folk in here this morning that you were sick in your body and the doctor said he had done everything that he could do and that you weren't going to make it, but our God, the promise keeper, raised you from your bed of affliction and you're here today to give God some glory? Do I have anybody in here this morning that folk told you you would never amount to anything? That you would never be anybody? That you would never go anywhere? But you stand in here today more than a conqueror, more than victorious, because our God, the promise keeper, made you somebody. Do I have any folk in here this morning that you applied for a loan? You applied for a house? You applied for a car, you applied for a job, and the people told you that your credit was too bad, that you didn't make enough money, that you weren't qualified, but you're standing here today with money in your pocket, a full bank account, a homeowner, a car owner, with a salary job with benefits, because our God, the promise keeper, made you qualified and gave you the blessings that the devil, that your family, that your friends said that you didn't deserve. How many of you here today are going to believe the good report? How many of you today are going to believe the Lord's report? I tell you on this morning, my sisters and my brothers, don't give up. The promise is near. As a result of the report of the 12, the Israelites began to murmur and complain against God. And they decided that they were not going to take possession of the land that God had promised them. So here in today's text, Joshua and Caleb makes a plea with the people of Israel and encourages them to take the land that God had promised him. And my sisters and my brothers, when God gives you a promise, when he promises you a blessing, shouldn't nobody have to encourage you. Nobody should have to make you. Nobody should have to plead with you to take hold of the land that God gave you, the promise that God gave you. And so on today, my sisters and my brothers, as you journey through the year of our Lord 2020, as you continue on on your path, this path called life, I challenge you to consider and embrace three key factors when God makes you a promise. The first thing I want you to remember and embrace is that you got to believe God. 
You got to believe him at his word. Whatever he said, it shall be so. In today's text, Joshua and Caleb, in the midst of their deep distress over Israel's refusal to enter Canaan, reminds the people that the promised land is an exceeding good land that flows with milk and honey. In other words, the promised land was a land of substance and abundance. There was an abundance of cattle raising and rich fertilized soil for growing and harvesting crops. They also tell the people not to fear the Canaanites and Amalekites because God was with his people. You see, the Amalekites were, and the Canaanites were giants to the Israelites. And because of their smaller statue, and because of the Canaanites and the Amalekites' larger statue, the people of Israel feared. And if you will be honest with yourself and everybody else today, some of us are, are standing in the presence and facing some giants on today. We are standing in the midst of people, in the midst of thoughts, in the midst of things that we feel can hinder us from receiving the blessing of God. But I tell you on today, don't look at your giants. Don't look at your opposition. If God promised you a blessing, the promise giver and the promise keeper promised you a blessing. You best believe no matter how big your giants are, my God, our Savior will deliver you. He will bring to pass whatever the promise is. So Israel failed to believe God. They failed to believe the God that had delivered them from destruction and defeat time and time again. And some of us are just like those Israelites. Just like those Israelites. Although God delivers us time and time again, we still look at our current circumstances. And we don't believe that God is going to make a way out of no way. And so the Israelites... Instead of believing the God that had chose them as his own and showed them favor in the midst of their enemies, the God that wiped away all of their tears, the God that spared their lives over and over again. And some of us can testify on oh, today that if it had not been for God on our side, we would not be sitting here on today. We would not be standing here today because there were times that God had to reach down in the uttermost pit of the earth and lift us up out of that pit and spare and save our lives and spare and save our souls. So instead of believing God, the God that forgave their sins, instead of believing the God that showed them mercy, granted them grace, and made a way out of no way. Time and time again, despite their sin and their disobedience, despite their indiscretions and their immorality, they failed to believe God. But I come by to tell you this morning that no matter what the devil say, and you see the devil loves, to try to speak and talk in the ears and get into the minds of God's people, to deter them from doing his work and from doing his will, to stop you from believing and trusting in God. No matter what lies he tries to whisper in your ear, no matter what schemes he tries to use to stop you and trust and believe on today, I stand as a living witness that folk will scheme on you. The devil will scheme on you. When God has put a calling on your life, when God has made a promise to you, the devil uses folk. Sometimes those folk are the folk that's closest to you. He will use folk to throw a stumbling block in your way. But I stopped by to tell you this morning that in 2020, if God said it, it is so. 
know all you have to do is just believe and trust God at his word. Don't listen to what your mama got to say. Don't listen to what your daddy got to say. Don't listen to what the church folk got to say. Don't listen to what your enemies got to say. All you got to do is believe in the word of God. Because he is the God that sits high. And he is the God that sits low. And he is the God that has all power in the palm of his hands. Do I have a witness on today in this house of worship that you face some giants? You face some opposition? Folk have thrown stumbling blocks all in your way. But thanks be to God Almighty who has all power, all authority, all glory in the palm of his hand. He showed up and he showed out and he made a way out of no way for you and for you and for you and for me. And on today, we give him glory. Hallelujah. So all you have to do on today is you have to believe God. You have to believe God at his word. If he said it, it is so. Everybody else around you may say no. But if God says yes, if God says yes, whether, you, whether they feel you qualified or not, if God said it, whether they feel you worthy or not, if God said it, if the promise giver said it, if the promise keeper said it, that it is so and it shall come to pass. So on today, the second thing that I would like you to remember and embrace on your journey this year, as you go through the year and God gives you promises and he gives you grace and he gives you mercy, the second thing you have to do is trust God. First, you got to believe him. And then after you believe, you got to trust him. Joshua and Caleb tell the people that if the Lord delight in them, he will bring them into the promised land. And I say to you on today, Third Baptist, if the Lord delights in you, he will give you the desires of your heart. I don't care what the devil says. If God delights in his people, he will give them the desires of their hearts. And if anybody should have trusted in God, it should have been those Israelites. If anybody should have trusted in God's will, in his purpose, and in his good report, it should have been those old hard-headed Israelites. Because the Lord had shown himself great and mighty in their lives over and over and over for generation after generation after generation. How many people do I have here in the house today that can say that God has showed himself great and mighty in your life over and over and over and over again? Time after time, even though we were disobedient, even though we didn't listen, even though we wouldn't make sacrifices for God, even though we were in the midst of our mess, our mixed up, tangled up situations, doing things that God told us not to do, not doing things that God told us to do. How many can say that on today, God showed you mercy and he granted you grace and he still showed himself great and mighty a strong tower in your life mighty in battle in your life so in the midst of Israel's mess God never failed to deliver on his promises never Fail to deliver. You see, everybody else around you might fail you. 
They may fail to deliver on their promises, but I know a God. Do you know a God this morning? I know a God that will never fail to make good on his promises. You see, some of us today remind me of those Israelites. As a matter of fact, if I be honest with myself, and I be honest with you today, I've been just like those old Israelites. No matter how much God blesses us, no matter how much he keeps us, and restores us and delivers us and sustains us and protects us. Whenever we find ourselves between a rock and a hard place, oh my God, we feel like giving up. We feel like throwing in the towel. We start complaining, we start murmuring, and we find all kinds of reasons to turn back. Do I have any people in here today that can admit that no matter how much God has done for you, there were times when on your path you have felt like giving up. You felt like turning around and going the other way. And those Israelites, those Israelites, when they found themselves between a rock and a hard place, when they found themselves with Pharaoh's army behind them, and the Red Sea before them. They complained, they murmured. All they could see was the circumstances that was going on around them. But thanks be to God Almighty that although they didn't look at Jesus, although they continued to focus on the circumstances, God still made a way out of no way. And I tell you on today, no matter what's going on around you, God will still make a way. But I want to serve you notice on today that God's promises never, ever come without a struggle. Every promise has some type of opposition, an obstacle that you got to get over, some kind of hurdle that you have to face. Because in the midst of our trials, in the midst of our situations, our circumstances, our tribulations, in the midst of our hurt and our pain, in the midst of our wilderness circumstances, our wilderness stances, I tell you on today that God will make a way out of no way. And I tell you that the circumstances that you face in the wilderness will prepare you and place you in position to receive your promise, the promise that God has gave you. Whenever God makes a promise, you best believe you will have to face some giants. There will be opposition. The people of Israel refused to enter the land, the land of Canaan, the land of promise because they were afraid of their oppositions. How many folk here today will admit that you have been afraid of your opposition? Can I get a witness this morning? Some folk have been afraid of their opposition. He had, but you know that God, even though they had faced their opposition, even though there was trouble in the land, even though they faced some giants, God already had a plan of defeat. He already promised his people that he would overtake the inhabitants and possess the land. But they still did not trust him. They trusted the word of the naysayers. Do I have anybody here this morning that knows a little bit about those naysayers? You know what I'm talking about, those naysayers? They always got something negative to say. Those Debbie Downers, those folks that like to exaggerate the situation. God gives you a promise, and instead of send them seeing the glass as half full, they see it as half empty. Those naysayers, those folks that tell you you're never going to amount to anything. You're never going to make it. You're never going to be anybody. You're not going to get healed. The doctor has already given you up. Your husband, your wife is not going to get it straight. Your relationship is over. Those Debbie Downers, those naysayers. But I'm saying today that no matter what folks say 
or how negative or hopeless it may seem. No matter how big your opposition, all you got to do is trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, that's the Lord, and he will and he shall direct your path. Best believe today that God's got your back and everything is going to work out in your favor. God is your refuge. He is your strength and he is your ever-present help in the time of trouble. You are more than a conqueror through him that loves you. You can do all things, not some things. You can face all things. You can go through all things. You can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. And when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord will rise up a standard against him. So don't you give up on today. Don't you give in on today. I tell you with assuredness, don't give up your promise. It's near. The last thing, and I'm going to be very quick. The last thing that you must do, I want you to embrace. And remember, on your journey to your promised land, is you got to obey God. You got to believe him. You got to trust him. And you got to obey him. See, a lot of folks don't like to hear about obeying God. We think that God's supposed to show up on our behalf whenever we want. But we don't have to obey God. But I'm telling you this morning that obedience is better than sacrifice. And if you don't obey God, there's going to be some trouble at the end. Joshua and Caleb urged the people to rebel not ye against the Lord. God's chosen people had a history of being disobedient. They disobeyed him. He would chastise them. He would give them mercy, extend his grace, and deliver them from their circumstances. And this was a normal pattern of behavior for the chosen nation. Do I have anybody in here this morning that will admit that at some point in your life, before Jesus came and saved your soul, that you've been disobedient? You've had a normal pattern of behavior of disobedience? In verse 9, the leaders plead with the people not to give up, not to complain, not to turn back, and to obey God by believing him, trusting him, and entering the land of promise. You see, Joshua and Caleb were trying to spare those hard-headed, stiff-necked, and ungrateful Israelites the penalty of giving up and disobeying God. And I tell you today, my sisters and brothers, there is a penalty to giving up. And there is a penalty to disobeying God. But of course, they didn't listen. For we see in verse 12 that God's promise of blessings for this particular generation of murmurers and complainers turned to judgment. And my sisters and my brothers, we must remain cognizant of the fact that there is a penalty and that we must adhere to the conditions of the promise that God gives us and not give up. If God makes your promise and gives you instructions, you must be obedient. You cannot enjoy the blessings of God and you cannot go on and move on to your purpose in God if you are disobedient. The word of God teaches us that to obey is better than sacrifice. So I say to you that if you obey God and his commandments and his instructions and his word, everything will work out in your favor. People of God, as you embrace and progress through this time, as you progress on your journey towards your promise, I challenge you to make a declaration deep down in your spirit that no matter what giants you face, no matter what trials and tribulations come your way, no matter what obstacles are placed in your path on your way to your destiny, you won't give up and that you will inherit your promised land all of the promises that God has for you. Trust me when I say that the devil is busy and he knows what to do, how to do it, when to do it, through whom to do it, to get you off course and cause you to give up on God and his promises. But no matter what the devil tries to do, I 
challenge you on today. I implore you on today to endure and persevere in the spiritual so that you can reap the benefits in the natural. I challenge you to have faith in God, to believe in God, to trust God, to obey God, and know with assuredness that he has your back. Because there is absolutely nothing that God can't and won't do for you if you will remain faithful and trust him and believe him and obey him. I challenge you today to trust in the Lord. No matter what God has promised in you, no matter what he said he's going to do, rest assured that he will perform it. Don't give up. The promise is near. Don't give up, my sister. The promise is near. Don't give up, my brother. The promise is near. Don't give up, Third Baptist. The promise is near. My sisters and my brothers, you are almost there. Say it with me. I am almost there. You are almost there. You are almost there to your destiny. You are almost there to your purpose. You are almost there to your healing. You are almost there to your deliverance. You are almost there with your power. You are almost to the end and you're near, very near to your promise. And I can imagine on today, I can imagine that over 2,000 years ago, when Jesus went to the cross and he died for our sins, when he suffered, bled, and died for me and for you, and for you and for you, when he took on the penalty of sin, I can imagine that as Jesus was going to that old rugged cross, when he was traveling to the old Golgotha, when he was traveling to die on the cross, I can imagine the angels, the heavenly angels whispering, and Jesus here saying, Jesus, you are almost there. As they mocked him, and they scorned him, and they beat him, and they whipped him. I can imagine and picture in my mind the heavenly angels whispering in his ear. Jesus, you are almost there. As they put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. I can imagine and I can hear the devil trying to discourage him. But I can hear the heavenly angels saying, Jesus, you are almost there. As the third hour rolled around, and the sixth hour, and the ninth hour, and when he cried out to his father, I can hear the angels saying, don't give up. Don't give in. Don't throw in the towel. Your purpose is almost here. You are almost there. And when he said it is finished and he gave up the ghost, the promise was accomplished. I'm so glad today that on third day, on the third day, do I have anybody in the house today? that can praise God for the third day. Because on the third day, God rules with all power in his hands. And I'm glad on today that he rose with all power in his hands. And because he has all power in his hands, I have the victory over all of my circumstances. I have the victory on my path to my destiny. I have the victory over my enemies and over the devil. I have dominion over the devil. I have power over the devil. And there's nothing that he can tell me to deter me from the Lord. Do I have anybody in the house today that you've been waiting for a long time? You've been waiting for a long time. God has placed something on your life. He's placed a call, a purpose on your life. He's given you a promise. And you've been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. And while you're waiting, 
the devil has showed up. Time and time again, he showed up. You've been waiting for years for your promise to come to fruition. And the devil is trying to steal your joy, to kill God's mission, to stop God's purpose. I tell you on today, don't you give up. Don't you give up. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you listen to the devil. You put all your faith and your trust in the Most High God. The God who made the heavens and the earth. The God that sits high and the God that looks low. I tell you, don't give up, my sisters and my brothers. Your promise is near on today. You may stand at this time. The doors of the church is open. The doors of the church is open today.